Is it fair to say that Mark is right and that the, the government's current immigration policy seems to be in tatters? No one's going to Rwanda and even the MOT is not prepared to house them in this uh, country, while at the same time, record-breaking number of migrants cross the channel. I mean, it's been a complete not a failure. Well, of course, I'm on the East Sussex coast, so I'd know all about the concerns people have about small boat crossings, uh, the dangers to those that are on the boats, but also the fact that as a country, uh, we have finite resources. So uh, it's essential that we, we look to overturn uh, the ruling uh, that really halted the Rwanda project in its steps. Um, that's something that I back hugely. I know both leadership candidates do. Uh, and I'm very confident that all steps will be taken to ensure that that policy uh, can continue. So yes, more urgency needed, but also more joined up government. So we don't have decisions like the one we've just been discussing this afternoon. Indeed. Well, let's talk about the next government, because, of course, uh, there is a battle taking place this summer between Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak, who you are backing. Why would uh, Liz Truss' emergency tax cutting budget be an electoral suicide note? So I think the concept there is that at a time when people are going to be hit with massive energy bills, to be giving uh, in the first few days back in Parliament a tax cut to the wealthiest, bear in mind that the national insurance rise doesn't apply to 70% of the workers because Rishi Sunak took them out when he increased the threshold for national insurance on the 6th of July. So the optics are, if you're wealthy, if you're the prime minister, you're going to get a national insurance tax cut of £1,600. If you're a pensioner at a time when you're facing energy bills that are going to be astronomical, you get nothing. And if you're on the national living wage, you get £59 a year. That is not great optics. Uh, and it doesn't show us on the side of the most vulnerable. Uh, that's something that Rishi's package so far, £37 billion pounds worth um, for the summer has done. But more is going to be needed. And if you spend it all on tax cuts for the wealthiest, A, it puts inflation up because they'll probably spend it on something more than just their utility bills. B, it sends out a terrible message that the Conservative Party is not on the side uh, of those who need it the most. In saying that, Rishi Sunak, uh, I think, conceded or, or would like to say that he is prepared to do more now, given the fact that we may well see energy bills reach over £4,000 per annum for the average family this winter, an extraordinary sum of money. I mean, there's recognition throughout Parliament more needs to be done. How, how is Rishi Sunak going to pay for that, though? Is he potentially going to have to borrow more money to get people through this crisis? Well, it's a question of choices. I think the, the issue is if money does need to be spent, and of course, we'd rather be spending it on paying back the deficit. There's 20 pounds, sorry, 20 billion pounds alone in June, just on our interest payments. So we've got to par that back. But this is unprecedented. People on fixed incomes, on low incomes are going to be paying energy bills, say, of over 4,000 pounds come January. Uh, and the cap only went up from 1,200 pounds you know, just that would be a year previous. So where do people find that money from? It's right that the government is on their side. But the government can't be on their side if it's cutting taxes for the wealthiest or corporation tax rises not going up for businesses. It's about choices. And I think Rishi's choice is to protect the most vulnerable, protect the pensioners, because they're going to need the help the most uh, rather than those who, who have wealthier means and can perhaps afford it. And that's all very well and good. But, but my question was, how is he going to pay for it? I mean, what I'm trying to say is, having railed against it this entire campaign, is the former chancellor, is Rishi Sunak prepared to borrow money to help try and get people through this winter? Because it's going to cost a lot of money if the government are going to bail people out. Where is the money going to come from? Well, he's not railed against it. The, the package that he put together, giving £1,200 to... No, he's railed against the further possible. borrowing, though. No, he hasn't. He's actually said that he will stand by and be ready uh, to put more money into, into the most vulnerable's pockets if that's needed. Uh, and if that does mean more borrowing, then, of course, that will be needed. But you know, that's what we're talking about, the most extraordinary of times when people's bills will go up from £1,200 to £4,500. Of course, you stand by those people who are the most vulnerable. As I say, he's done that with a £37 billion payout, which isn't even yet paid out in full. So there's still money to come through. What he said is that if those bills do go up again, he'll look at it again. And I think that's the kind of reassurance that we need, rather than people feeling that you've got a government that's only on the side of the wealthiest and the biggest businesses. It's time to stand by the most vulnerable. And that's what he's promised he'll do. And that's why I back him.